so good afternoon students my name is abhi sharma and i am a chartered accountant by profession i will be taking your cma classes so i will be taking your cma class cma part 1 class and before that i must tell you there are two parts in the cma cma part 1 and cma part 2 cma part 1 mainly focuses on the external financial reporting costing as well as internal control whereas part 2 majorly deals with the financial management aspect so uh, so from in, when students can appear in any of the part uh, there is no hard and fast rule that we have to appear for part 1 before and then part 2 after that so in this i uh, in this video i will give a brief about what's the course content in part 1 and how are we going to approach this subject what all we are going to cover uh, what will be our pattern of studying everything related to this uh, so i will be taking your part 1 only so in part 1 there are approximately total 6 sections section a section b section c section d section e and section f so let me share my screen so in section a uh, we have external financial reporting uh, popularly known as accounts in our 11th and 12th we used to say uh, we all from um, all those students who are from commerce background have studied accounts so external financial reporting is our account section section b in this there are planning budgeting and forecasting so this is a bit of a strategic planning and forecasting it is a bit of mix of theory and practical we will i will say the third is performance management and the fourth is cost management these two part are you can say is uh, not theoretical these are practical uh most of it means of the maximum part is practical in these two sections in section e and f is mainly theoretical you can say so the coverage approximately 15% of your paper comes from section e approximately 20% of your paper uh, the weightage given to each section is uh, given here so section b covers around 20% of your exam section c covers around 20% of your exam then section d e and f all three covers 15% each of your exam so coming on to your paper pattern it's a 500 marks paper as you must be knowing so up around uh, from among the 500 marks 75% of your paper is mcq based and multiple choice questions and rest 25% is your theoretical or essay type sa type questions in among the sa type you get two sa type questions that you have to type in your answer so you have to give your marks before that in order to uh note down your timing so that you don't get run out of your time okay so uh coming on to next that how we are going to approach our cma part 1 uh, how we are going to go forward in our studies so what i will be doing is that i will be discussing all the concepts one by one uh, for example i will be starting with section a first so i will be covering the concepts of section a suppose we covered 3 to 4 units in our first class from section a so first i will be telling you the concept then i will be making you go through our material that as to what we have all that we have covered all our a uh, portion all the topics and uh, if something is pending i'll cover that and then i will make you go through some of the questions for your practice and then rest of the question uh, we can't cover all the questions in your class so then the remaining question you guys have to do at your home uh so you will have to do your at your home uh, the self practice in case of any doubt you can always reach out to me okay so coming on to our 
external financial reporting section. This is our first section, external financial reporting. As the name suggests, uh, everyone from the finance background is aware of the accounts part that they used to prepare accounts, the profit and loss statement, the balance sheet in their 11th and 12th, maybe in their BCom if they have done it. However, those who are not from the science background, don't worry. Uh, we will be studying uh, like that. Uh, I will make sure that you guys also understand how the accounts are being prepared. So what is external financial reporting? Uh, there is, these are the set of rules and the standard the principle on which basis we prepare or we prepare or the company prepares their accounts so that the external users or the internal users can go through their account and take the informed decisions. So this, uh, this subject tells you about how a company is going to prepare their account, the principles they are going to apply, the rules they are going to follow for preparation of those accounts so that their accounts are made such that they can be compared with each company. They are in line with the regulatory requirements. So that's what we are going to cover in our external financial reporting. So in external financial reporting, first is the first topic that we are going to do is the financial statements. The financial statements. Financial reporting. First, financial reporting. What does it mean? It means to provide the useful information, useful financial information about entity. to take the informed decision. This is financial reporting. OK, so mainly there are two users to financial report, two users of financial report. We can call them as who are interested in knowing the finances of the company, the users, those who want to go deep dive into financial reporting. First one, we can call them as direct users. The second one, we can call them as indirect users. Who all are direct users? Those who all are directly interested. Who has those who all are directly interested in the company? Directly interested in the company. Now, if we say the persons who are directly interested, then who comes to our mind? Suppose you want to buy the shareholders, then investors must be directly interested. Current shareholders are directly interested because they have invested the capital. They are the owner of the company. Board of directors who are running the company. Then employees must be directly interested in the company then suppliers who are supplying the material why are they interested uh, they are interested because as to because they have to receive payments from that company if the company is not doing financially well they will start supplying they will 
uh, stop supplying on credit to the company, then these are the direct users. Now, who, who are indirect users? Those who are indirectly interested in the company. Whom to whom we can say that the person is indirectly interested or has indirectly vested in the company's interest? In the operations of the company. First, uh, regulatory bodies in India, ROC, uh, Registrar of Companies, must be regulatory bodies. In India, there is an ROC, that is the Registrar of Companies, who are interested in the company indirectly, the financials of the company, whether the company is solvent, insolvent, uh, whether it is doing their business correctly, they are properly filing their ROC compliances. Then SEBI, for the companies who are listed in the stock exchange, SEBI is interested in the financial that the company is showing the true and the fair pictures and whether the stock price movement is according uh, is being made accordingly there is no such a case of insider trading or irregular behavior in the stock prices so these are the person the financial analyst uh, these are the persons who are indirectly interested in the company so the financial so uh, you know the listed companies generally publish their financial in the annual report you, uh, you guys can download the annual report of any company from their website and go through it once so as to uh, have a more clarity how does the financials that the company prepare for the users how does it look like to have a look like the feeling of how is the actual financial that the company prepare then before deep diving into the topic one thing i need to clarify is that we are not going to uh, cover elaborately in this session uh, it is just an overview of the topic and so we will be deep uh, going to deep dive into all these things in our classes so before moving ahead how these accounts are prepared what all accounts are do we need to prepare so first of all uh, we need to understand uh, you must have heard the term ifrs and us gap okay so the full form is international financial reporting standard international financial reporting standard and it means generally accepted accounting principles So before this, what is a standard? Standards is nothing, it's just a set of rules that are used to make things comparable. Okay, so why uh, the need of standard arise? So earlier, what we used to do, uh, suppose two companies are making their financials. So one is Wipro, one is TCS. Okay, so Wipro are making their financial as per their own policies, their own understanding, and, and they are using their own principles. At the same time, uh, TCS is making their financial as per their own understanding, their own principles. So 
as an investor or as an outsider will i be able to compare the financials of these two companies okay so in order to compare the financials of the two companies there was a need for particular standard the particular set of rules and the principles on which both of these companies will prepare their financials in a manner that the financials are prepared on the same principle the same standard so that both the financials can be compared at the same time that if i am having financials of tcs in my right hand and having financials of wipro in my left hand i should be able to compare the results of the two companies if they are not going to use the same thing then i won't be able suppose the basic example uh some of you have studied a uh, two method of valuing inventory valuing inventory one is lifo one is fifo lifo states that inventory that comes at the last goes at uh, goes first and the fifo says that inventory which is which comes first goes first so while preparing the financials as per a lifo standard and a fifo standard my profit is going to change so wipro is taking lifo for measuring its inventory and tc is taking fifo for measuring its inventory i won't be able to compare the value of inventory of the two companies because they have used a different method altogether so in order to compare the inventory value of both these companies they have to value inventory at the same principle they have to use the same principle for the same okay so earlier uh, most of you have uh, heard about accounting standards in india we used to uh, make accounts as per an accounting standard and uh, us used to prepare their accounts as per gap and there were one more organization named as ias international accounting standards so uh what used to have happen earlier was that all the countries have their own accounting standards they use to prepare their accounts as per their own accounting standards so what was happening uh, that uh, after the globalization happened so once the globalization happened uh, people started uh, to invest in other countries suppose us uh, some one from us started investing in india indian people started going to us russia europe so uh, but the problem we were facing that we uh, we won't be able to compare the financials of those companies suppose uh, my company is going to set up my office in london so i will be preparing my uh, accounts in london as per their own local gap and i will be preparing my indian accounts as per my own indian gap so my uh, since the rules and the principles i am going to prepare my accounts are going to be different i won't be able to compare my own results only uh, so how will be i able to compare the results with the different companies at the same time so there was a need to harmonize this system so that comparability becomes easier people can invest in other companies people can invest in the companies of different countries so uh, there was need to go for a single set of standards so here comes the birth of ifrs international financial reporting standards so international financial reporting standards set up a general set of rules and the principles for on which how to account for different things suppose leases impairment property plant and equipment so they gave a set of rules and uh, one principles for accounting so many of the countries over the period started adopting ifrs however 
due to the cultural difference the nature of difference of uh, different countries uh, every country could not easily adapt afrs as uh, due to the culture of some countries it would have a negative uh, if they will prepare their accounts as per ifrs it will have a negative impact on their financials uh, financials or and of the company so uh, for example in india we prepare accounts on the basis of our ind as ind as are nothing it is just an ifrs these are uh, we have taken the rules from ifrs with certain calves in and the calves out certain changes in the ifrs which were not acceptable as per the culture cultural difference of our country and the different countries uh, so these changes that we have made in our standards are generally called as calves in and calves out so there are uh, currently there are six calves in calves out uh, in our indian accounting standard it is just the replica of ifrs with the changes as per our own country uh, rules okay so now what is us gap us being the superior country always uh, they said that i won't be accepting the ifrs i have my us gap i will be preparing my accounts as per the gap on the but uh, slowly uh, slowly what happened was us started facing difficulty in itself that uh, some of uh, in comparing comparing their accounts with the accounts of the other so seeing the trend going on us gap currently also the accounts in the us are being prepared on the basis of us gap however us gap is also currently in line with the ifrs only the, uh, they have made the changes in their own gap so as to so that the gap comes in or align with ifrs standard only so that comparison of their financial and the financials of different companies in different countries become easier so in our syllabus uh, us cms syllabus we will be studying us gap of this one of the major difference between ifrs and the us gap is that us gap is rule based that is strict it is stricter you have to follow the rules whereas ifrs is principle based that is it is open to interpretations we will be studying in detail principle based and rule based um, ahead where the things will come i will be telling you that see that uh, us gap apply a particular rule here whereas ifrs is principle based so i hope okay yeah ifrs was made out of accounting taking accounting standards from iaf ias in the international accounting standards and with modifying and making some changes as per different countries requirement or which can align with all the countries so uh, after the ifrs are made a particular international accounting standard has demolished had gone away so this was the birth of ifrs and us gap so after that one thing so now the financial statement the types of financial statement that the company prepares number 1 balance sheet second income statement
popularly known as trading and profit and loss account in the 11th and 12th class we used to call it as profit and pnl account the third statement of cash flow fourth statement of changes in equity and fifth other comprehensive income most of us must be aware with the first three and the next two is new for most of the people or the most of the students so don't worry we will be covering in detail and it won't be much new to you guys after this you will be easily able to do the sub question and get your things clear in your head what is what all is there and everything so from the basics what is balance sheet balance sheet kya provide karta what does it provide it is statement of financial position financial position on a particular date it is prepared on a particular date it tells about the amount of assets and the liabilities that a company holds on a particular date it is not over the period the main thing to remember particular date whenever we used to prepare balance sheet what do we used to write we used to write balance sheet as at as at then the date after this so do we prepare balance sheet for a year only no we don't prepare balance sheet we do prepare balance sheet at the year end we do prepare balance sheet at the quarter end we prepare balance sheet at six month end so it's not that we prepare balance sheet every year only we have we prepare balance sheet to know the financial position at a particular date it might be the quarter it might be biannually it might be annually now income statement this is the financial if this is the financial position income statement tells us about the statement of financial performance how is the company performing is it performing good is it performing bad what are the profit that the company is earning what are the gross margins that the company is making no is it prepared on a particular date no it is for throughout the year throughout the year what all expenses that the company made what all direct expenses what all indirect expenses that the company has made so this is the financial performance whenever we prepare income statement we write income statement for the year ending or for the quarter ending this 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 it means that it is made for a particular period not for a particular date okay next cash flow position cash flow position why is cash flow statement necessary that cash flow statement is very much necessary for example company might be in profit as per a financial statement as per a balance sheet as per a profit income statement we the company is earning huge profit but there might be a scenario that company is short of its cash to understand uh, to understand the cash flow of the company it needs to prepare the cash flow statement how will we understand the cash flow of the company 
or at the same time company might be in a loss company is not performing well it has incurred a loss but might have good cash flow positive cash flow uh, and when it comes handy is for example the company has to take an investment decision the capital budgeting decision in order to invest in a particular machinery particular land particular building they need to identify the cash flow how can how much cash they can contribute internally how much they have to uh, outsource that is take a loan from the external sources or the internal sources for that purpose we prepare a cash flow statement cash flow statement covers three in this we cover three statement we identify cash flow from operating activities then cash flow from investing activities third is cash flow from financing activities cash flow is one of the favorite topics of the students in class 12 they used to say that it is a free key marks this i get no so these are the three statement in which are there in the cash flow statement then there is a statement for changes in equity we will come to this on a later part changes in equity and other comprehensive income uh, in a nutshell if i say what is changes in equity so the changes in equity is uh, i can say that uh, uh there is an equity portion uh those what is equity equity shareholders wealth so uh, we write equity in a balance sheet so what are what all changes uh, has been made to that equity portion if we have raised certain funds more what are the profits that we have retained in our organization apart from distributing dividend so what all changes have been made to our equity that is the for that we prepare a account called statement of changes in equity and the other is the other comprehensive income we will be studying in detail what all comes to into these two accounts that we prepare so these are the thing basic things that we prepare for our financial statement all these five accounts combined together become the financial statement okay so one last thing that i think we should cover uh balance sheet that we prepare helps in assessing let me understand four terms one is liquidity what is liquidity liquidity tells you that uh, how much time a particular asset takes to convert into cash time taken for an asset to convert into cash okay this is liquidity if the time taken is short that it gets converted into cash easily then it is highly liquid if the time taken is too long then the asset is not liquid second financial flexibility balance sheet helps us to assess the financial flexibility what is financial flexibility it is the ability of the business ability of the business to take immediate action to convert any asset to cash 
in order to respond to unexpected circumstances so what is financial flexibility it is the ability of the business to take how immediately a business can take its action so that the asset can be converted into cash if any uncertain unexpected circumstances circumstance occurred it might be due to any change in law regulatory requirement or anything else due to any natural calamity whatever else the third term that we should know it solvency solvency is nothing but can our asset cover all our liabilities if our assets are more than the liabilities then that means we are solvent that the company is solvent assets more than liabilities and if our assets are less than liabilities then the company is not so that solvent fourth so fourth is risk what is risk risk is unpredictability of future events something that we don't know it is going to happen in future it is unpredictable that is it can be due to any transactions any transactions or circumstances that could affect the company's cash flow company's cash flow so these are the risk so balance sheet whenever we prepare balance sheet it helps to identify the liquidity of the company it helps to identify whether the company is solvent or is solvent nobody is going to invest in a company that is insolvent that does not have its asset that that has liabilities more than its asset no rules it helps to ascertain whether the company is uh, going concern or not it helps to identify whether the company has financial flexibility if any uncertain event occur whether it is it will be able to mitigate the risk if anything occur in future okay so uh so this is it uh in detail uh, what is balance sheet how it is prepared what are the line items that are in their balance sheet uh how is the income statement is going to be prepared what are the line items in the income statement and the same with the cash flow changes in equity what is changes in equity what is other comprehensive income we are going to study all these things in details in our classes so it is just an overview of the subject overview of the first unit that of external financial reporting that we are going to study so hope so everyone would have liked it and if you have liked it keep please keep it a thumbs up so thank you we'll meet you in the class next time